So Mike, here at the Goodwell Research Center, you guys are studying how effluent can help out with your crop production. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we began looking at this several years ago, looking at how we can utilize effluent as a nutrient source for our, our crop production with a subsurface drip irrigation system. And there are certain challenges associated with that, but we've managed to keep it going for oh, four or five years now. And uh, we've had some, I think, interesting results with it. And what kind of equipment do you guys have to use to put this system in place? Well, first of all, we have to plow the, the drip tape, this product here, into the ground. It's uh, buried about 14 inches deep, and it's between every other crop row. So each, each row of tape irrigates two rows of the plants. We have to tie it all together back to the, the water source. And that's one thing to keep in mind is effluent's only a small part of what actually goes through this. We put on typically about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half of effluent every season and we're putting on maybe 12 inches of fresh water irrigation from the Ogallala Aquifer as well. But uh, we, when we run it through uh, the water and the effluent through this product, it has to be filtered because the, the emitters in the product have very small openings, whereas sprinklers are probably putting on several gallons of water per minute through each, oh. each device. This puts on a fraction of a gallon per hour. So oh. we have to make sure all the particles are, are removed from it. So how does, that, how does that monitor that? I mean, the water comes through here and then what happens? I mean, well, the water comes through here and then we have this little device here, the emitter, that actually dissipates all the pressure. The pressure inside this pipe is going to be about 10 PSI and uh, then it comes out this opening here. You can see this small little flap that acts kind of like a check valve so soil particles and plant roots can't get back inside the emitter but when it's under pressure water trickles out of here and at this particular emitter at uh, about four tenths of a gallon of water per hour. Okay and this is a daily rate for the water? Yeah we, okay. we run the drip system five days a week for about three hours and it depends, we have four different rates on each of these plots, but we put on anywhere from about 15 hundredths of an inch of water per day up to about 25 hundredths of an inch of water per day, about a quarter of an inch. And then the effluent, that's just seasonal? Yeah, we just do that uh, at specific points through the first part of the season just to meet the nutrient needs of the crop. And typically we put on about five applications of about 4,500 gallons on each of these plots, which is about, each plot's about eight-tenths of an acre. And uh, that will meet the nutrient needs of the crop. We only put on about as much nitrogen and phosphorus as the crop will remove each season. All right. What have you guys found? You, know, you guys are, what, this soybeans and corn out here. Yeah. What kind of results have you had? Well, we've been doing a, a bean corn rotation. This is the fourth year. And last year, our, our corn plots, uh, not having had any commercial fertilizer for, for three years, just nutrients from effluent, and we put some enfuric acid through the, the fresh water to make sure we don't have any mineral buildup in the emitters. Uh, on the high rate of uh, irrigation, we got 187 bushels per acre. And on the low rate, we got 145 bushels per acre of corn. The beans have been a little more problematic because of you know, cool weather early on in the season. We haven't got as, as good a results as we'd like with them. But the corn, I think we've been able to prove that we can sustain this without using commercial fertilizer. What do you guys see for your future out here? I mean, what do you hope to happen? Well, uh, we'd like to show that this is a, uh, a system that is sustainable and it's also economically competitive with other forms of irrigation. If you look at the, the nutrient utilization and the improved water use efficiency, uh, the, the upfront cost of this system is about twice as much, two and a half times as much as a center pivot irrigation system, acre for acre. But if we can use a little less energy, get more efficient use of the water, we can make more efficient use of a resource like uh, swine affluent for fertility source, uh, maybe over the 20 year life of the product, we can make it, make it pay. And that's, that's what we'd hope to demonstrate. All right, thank you so much for your time today. Okay.